All right, so again, to uh, work with this multi-cam editing, we've started a new project, and then we import our clips, all three of them. We right-click on them, still selected, and select Create Multi-Camera Source Sequence. Use all the defaults and press OK. Alright, so after we create that sequence there, then we need to get it to the timeline. So if we right click it, we can say new sequence from clip. Or I think we could have just even just dragged it over into here. Yep, and it makes a new sequence from that. So either right click it and say new sequence from clip or just drag that over into your timeline. All right. Any questions on that? Questions? Yep. Okay, so now to see this these multiple camera angles, what we need to do is add this uh, this little toolbar icon which is the multi camera toggle viewer, right? You guys don't have it on your toolbar to start off with, so you have to press the plus button here to the bottom right of your program monitor, press the plus, and then find this icon. It looks like a square with four squares next to it, and if you hover over it, it should say toggle multi-camera view. All right, we take that, and just like we do at the action safe area, we drag it onto our toolbar. So you pick it from here and drag it onto here. Press OK, and now if you press that button, you should see all three camera angles, and then basically this is the one that's like kind of like your current view. Uh, now we have this set up where we can see all our camera angles, um, and we can actually go through there, and as it's playing, we can choose which angles. Now before we do that though, I know for this video, we had a bunch of setup in the beginning. All right, and kind of, they did some practicing. So I want you to go to 42 seconds, all right? And so we can use our time code here. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 42, 0, 0. And we're going to create an endpoint from there, or actually we can just kind of trim our video to that point, all right? So we're going to hide everything to the left of that. So I went to my time code, I typed that in, I pressed enter, that moved my playhead to that point, and then I just trimmed that down. All right. Now let's get rid of that empty space. I'm going to right click and do a ripple delete. Um, with our new timeline, I think uh, we have some time at the end where after they're done, it's kind of just like think right about here. Let's see if I play this. Let's find the exact point. All right, so that was it there. So let's go to 20, on our new time code, we're going to go to 22 seconds, and we will trim to that. So we went to 42 seconds. We trimmed the left side. We moved it over. Then we went to 22 seconds, and we kind of trimmed the back end of it. So now our final video is 22 seconds, which just has now our basically our little contest here. So we can watch this go through, and we can see our different camera angles. And this would be basically the content that we want to include on here. And that's the end, right? So we don't have any of that extra stuff on there. All right, so okay. So once now we have our, our, our actual footage we want to work with, all you're going to do is start by, or just pick your clips or your camera angles. So I, I want to see the overall first. And, and you guys really, whatever views you want to choose, you can. But if I press play, as it's going through, I can choose my different camera angles. So over here is basically what your output's going to be. And you know, just trying to get a little variety of your different camera angles. Right? 
because you wouldn't want to be whip panning, as they call it, going back and forth. That would create our angles, all right, or, or our different views. And as we can see now, if we zoom in on our timeline, that we have basically, it's kind of like it cut the different, uh, that master process clips into these different videos. So now if we play back through, we can see all of our different angles that we have basically recorded through there. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting too. We could do a voiceover now maybe if we wanted to. That would kind of be cool. We could mute this and do a, a commentary over it because my audio, like thinking about what happened as I was recording wasn't so great, but you know, we could press the microphone button and we could say, now we have this grand type of scheme and blah, blah, blah. All right, and it recorded that down there. So, I don't know, that, we don't have, I don't, you guys don't have to do that for today, but just saying that would be a good probably thing to do with that. Um, if you decide you wanted to change your angles, uh, this is nice also because like right now, it's showing Megan here. If I click on this and instead I want to have Destiny's camera angle, that's all I have to do is press that angle up there and I can continue playing. So if I wanted to have Megan in there for a little bit longer, uh, I could press stop and it actually made, you know, it shows those camera angles and, and adjusted that onto the timeline. All right, so this is, I think, a really good tool. So if you have all your footage, as long as you have it synced in some way, now you can use this, uh, this editor to um, go back and choose your camera angles. Um, I've actually used this. I did, a, I filmed a wedding with either two or three cameras. I set one up on a tripod. I had another that was handheld, and I just recorded them at the same time. I went through, and then I came back, and I used this multi-camera editor to make it look like I had two or three people working on the wedding video, but I did it all by myself, which uh, I was kind of proud of myself after. Um, I think I even did this, actually one of our graduation ceremonies, I even used drone footage too and mixed that in there. So I had two cameras and a drone, but this enables you to kind of have all these different camera shots and you can kind of work on your own doing that. Um, another kind of extension of this is uh, in our studio, we have the, the camera capturing computer, which uh, will take up to five camera sources, and you can select your camera angles while the action is happening. So that's kind of, you know, right now we're editing it in post-production, but that equipment allows us to edit really in production. So, uh, you know, as you watch sporting events or even talk shows and things like that, that's what they're most likely using. They're using a camera switcher to do your camera takes um, during the actual live production so that they're not coming back and having as much editing to do afterwards. All right, but here's our final result here that we have then. So all I want you guys to do is export this. Uh, maybe we would save it first actually. Always good practice to save it. And then if we go to we can do file export media or we're on this clip here so this one is called destiny so I'm gonna rename this because it kinda pulled that name from there so I'm just gonna rename it so I know I can find it when I exit it so I'm gonna say multi cam practice PM alright cuz I already did one in the morning so the other way I can process this is to right click it and say export media kind of skips a step there of going to the file menu. Um, we can use all these default settings. Um, I, you know, have been a little bit more so. Uh, maybe you want to suggest, click off here, use maximum render quality to really get the highest quality. And don't forget your source range. We want to do the entire sequence. All right, and then um, we can use the media encoder also to free up some um, resources. So I have, these are, I processed a bunch of videos. Remember we talked about batch processing yesterday? Today we recorded from a couple different cameras, so I brought all my footage in and batch processed them to convert them to MP4s. But with this one here, so that's gonna be the last one on there. I'm just gonna press play. So you can export directly from Premiere or if you wanna um, use the media encoder, sometimes it goes a little quicker. 
But then, you know, you could return back to Premiere now and we could keep working on something else. So that media encoder frees up your resource. Uh, you don't have to be working in Premiere. Uh, all right, so this is processing. And then if I click on my file location here, it should take me to that folder, which it did. And we can watch our final result. All right, so I think it's a nice product in the end. You, you have a seamless take in there. You could add transitions and things to that if you wanted to, but usually like kind of quick action like this, um, I think the transitions take away from it. All right, so once you have your video like that, um, I would like you to post it to YouTube and then put your link in the classroom uh, to show that it's been done for today. All right, so export, test it, post, and then uh, or publish to YouTube, and then post on the classroom uh, for your classwork grade today.